tomorrow may not bring that same thing that you said last night. Woo! Every time I find a little piece of mind, I hold on tight. Cause tomorrow may not bring the very same thing. No, no, no. Pastor Sharon Nance, how are you? I am blessed. How are you? Simply fantastic, and thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you answered the call, and you're here today to tell us a little bit about your pivotal point in life. Yeah, I know that you're a pastor. I know that you're fighting for the Lord, but I believe there is something that you would like to tell us on your journey, how you maybe got here. Well, my name is Sharon Nance. I was uh, born in Omaha, Nebraska. Moved to Lincoln, Nebraska when I was 29 and I moved here to save my boys. That's when the drugs and the gangs were coming up and I was a single parent. I had two sons, one that was two and one that was 12. I had no family here in Lincoln, but I made the move to save my sons. And so once I came here, I met my now husband, and uh, he's a very good role model for my boys. And now both my boys, one is 44 and one is 32, and they're both married, graduated high school, successful for young black men. Do you mind if I call you Sharon or do you prefer Pastor Sharon? No, you can call me Sharon. Okay, Sharon. Just so we can drop the titles and the names and everybody know we're real people with real names. Do you mind telling the uh, this story that you're getting ready to share? Have you thought about it? Yes, I have. And if I start, I can actually start at the beginning. I was born to my, my mom and my father in 1954. My father committed uh, murder and we sent him. My mother was a single mother with two children uh, living in Omaha. And my mom, she did the very best she could in raising and instilling values in me and my brother. And I'm the oldest, my brother is younger. And as we grew, um, my mom was a great example. She didn't just sit down and draw welfare. She worked hard. She ironed for people. She washed other people's clothes. She did what she had to do to make sure me and my brother were taken care of. Well, at the age of, well, at the age of 21, my father committed suicide in the Douglas County Jail. I'm going to say it wasn't a life-changing event because I really didn't know him. He went to prison when I was a year old. 
is an alcoholic. My mom was an alcoholic, um, but she was a functional alcoholic. She never lost a job. She went to work every day, but she was a functional alcoholic. So once my dad committed suicide, I decided that Omaha was not a place for me at that time. I had one son and I was impregnated with one son. And one particular day, I decided that I wanted to drink and have fun and, you know, and do all those things that everybody else did. Sharon, before you go any further, I, let me understand that you had a child and then you were impregnated. <laughs> you, was, you, you was carrying another child. And now is the time, your, your mind and what space you were in at that time says, now is the time that you want to go part. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. Yes. Okie dokie, let's go. Yes. And so I made some major mistakes. Um, I thought I wanted to go in the military. So I went over and to take the test to go to the military. But at that time, my son was four. And I left him at home by himself because I didn't have anybody to watch him. And when I came back, the police had taken my son. And my neighbor had called the police. What, what, okay, okay. How long were you gone and left your son there? Probably two and a half hours. Long enough to take the test. But leaving him alone was not what I should have done. Mind you, I already had had a warrant for my arrest, okay? Warn you. <laughs> yes. Because I had been drinking one night and I was drunk and I hit and ran. Okay. Oh well, I already had a warrant out for my arrest. And they took my son. When I came back, I called my mother. And I was crying. And my mom said, What are you crying for? Why'd you leave him? Mm -hmm. And I said, Well, I went to take a test to go into the military. She said, well, I got him. And then she said, but you need to go to the police station before you can get him back. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to go out and party tonight because tomorrow I'm going to jail, right? <laughs> so huh, I went out and had a good time. Once I found out my mom had my son, I was good. So I went out and had a good time. Well, the next morning I went to the... Omaha police station and I was sitting there talking to the officer and he was talking to me about what the steps that led up to me leaving my child. Well, I turned around, there was another officer standing in the doorway mm. and he said, um, by the way, we have a warrant for your arrest. So they arrested me right then took me to jail. My, of course, my mom had my child. And so uh, I'm in tears. And, um, not knowing, you know, why is this happening to me? So I was in there four days. What kind of warrant is this that kept you in there for four days? Why were you held for four days? Was it a bond issue? My mom said that I need to learn a lesson. So she was not going to pay my bond. Well, my aunt and my uncle, which are my mentors now, my spiritual mentors, my aunt's pastor, um, they got the money together to get me out of jail. And so I got out of jail and here I am pregnant with child, right? Uh -huh. So I get out of jail and and uh, I'm worried, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go. And so one thing I do know is that I was introduced to Jesus. In jail? I wasn't, ready to, I wasn't ready to accept him, but 
but I was introduced. Was you introduced in jail or, or by the mentor? Before I got there. Okay. Uh, before I got there, but I wasn't interested. You weren't. Right? <laughs> you weren't, at that no. time, you weren't interested. No. Okay. No. no. So when I got out and I was talking to my aunt, and she said, um, Sharon, he's he's the way. He's the way. I'm not going to say it's going to keep you from going to jail. I'm not going to say it's going to keep you from doing time. But I am going to say that he can strengthen you to go through whatever it is that's before you. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go to church. So on New Year's Eve night, I went to church. And the pastor that uh, of that church, I went up to become a member of the body of Christ. I went through um, the plan of salvation. I accepted Jesus as Lord of life. And then I was scheduled to be baptized. So all this, I'm just doing it because, and I'm being perfectly honest. I'm just doing it because I felt it would save me from going to jail. Wait. Not that I'm in it. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Oh, no, no, I like Not that. You was going to try to make a deal with God. You, yes. You said, yes. now I'll be, I'm going to be good for this time. Because yes. I don't want to yes. go to jail. Lord, help me this time. Go. And I won't yes. do it no more. Yes. Okay. Lord, if you just get me out of this mess. I will serve you till the day I die. Not no, I mean, not realizing that God knows the end at the beginning. Okay. So he already knew, you know, that I was going right back out there. I wasn't really ready to turn my life over. I just didn't want to go to jail. So I got my, moved in with my mom and got ready to go because I knew if I had to go, somebody had to take care of my child. So my mom, I lived upstairs with her and when I was laying in the bed, it was the day before court. I will never forget it. And I was dreaming and I dreamed about a tornado and it was like whirling and whirling and whirling. But even though it was whirling, nothing was moving. The grass was still, everything was still. And then all of a sudden the tornado just went away and the sun began to shine. So I hurried up and I called my aunt Charlotte and I asked her, I said, what does this mean? I just had a dream. And she said, Sharon, the, the tornado represented the torment that's going on in your life. And the sunshine represented God, that he was going to, whatever that torment was, that he was in control of it. And I said, oh man, I said, that made me feel good. So I went to court the next day and I'm scared to death because I didn't know what they were going to do. I had welfare fraud, I had hit and run, you know, I didn't know what they were going to do. I left my son by himself and so I had several charges. Wait, wait, so, wait, wait, wait before you go any further. You just named several charges. Mm -hmm. Hit and run, mm -hmm. child abandonment. Child neglect. Okay, child neglect. Yeah, let's, let's, because those are probably different charges. Mm -hmm. Failure to appear. Mm hmm. Hit and run. Hit and run. Failure to appear. Only reason why I hit and ran is because I was drunk. And the only I didn't reason you probably did a lot of this is because you was drunk probably or but something. i didn't want i didn't want to get a dui <laughs> well okay. okay right so you just gonna so run over I, the body you're gonna run I, over the body and keep I it moving the car oh the car right on, <laughs> the car thanks for clearing that up right on going okay yeah yeah so when when they got me down there and after the dream and I, I went to court and I was, you know, of course, scared. The judge, it was a slap on the wrist. It was a slap on the wrist, $75 fine. And I got to walk out. Wait, wait, wait. And they, I, they, you walked out on all charges or one? 
all, all charges dismissed all but one and i had a 75 five dollar that was god trying was to that? reveal himself to me oh that was sunlight you might not have I, understood but I didn't see it like that you didn't you had I your didn't. shades on huh come on okay <laughs> When I got out of that, I went on, I went home and I was just like, what out tonight? I'm going to party because, man, I'm free, right? But what I didn't know is that God had a rope on me. But he, he already had said enough was enough. He was going to reel me in, right? So I'm down here having a good time at the club hey. and so i see i see my baby daddy right and he's with some other girl and i'm Whoa. like i'm mad so i take i get a pistol Whoa. and i shoot you went wait, well wait. before I get, wait, yeah, wait, I wait, wait 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 sharon sharon wait pastor sharon wait yeah. a minute wait a minute yeah wait a minute you just got through it getting released of all this 75 dollar fine now you back out on the grind, turning it up, and now you're mad and got a pistol. I got a gun. To do what? And I, to kill him because he was with Shh. another girl. Okay, be careful now. I don't, I don't want the FBI kicking in my door. But go ahead. <laughs> and so, and so, after I shot in the bar like three what? times, yeah. Go ahead, I Pastor. Then I got in my car and I, I, I had my a girlfriend driving and I went to his house. Oh my I took God. a brick and I threw it through his front window. And he was pulling up just as I threw the brick. So I jumped in the car. I said, go, go, go. So we hurried up and got, you know, out of there. Well, then about an, I don't know, about an hour later, he calls and says, I know you're the one that did this and the police are going to be coming to see you. I said, send the police. I ain't did nothing. I ain't been nowhere near you. I ain't did nothing. And so the police did come. They came and they questioned me and, and all that. And, and I said, uh, I didn't do nothing. I ain't been nowhere. You know, of course, I lied my way out of that. <laughs> oh, so, wait a minute, wait a minute. Of course, of course, I lied my way. You, no, you know, no, I mean, what else What else was there to do? <laughs> Let me just no, lie. No, I didn't do no, nothing. Okay. <laughs> I didn't do me. He's lying on me. He got all these different women he's messing with. No, it wasn't me. I went home that night. I cried and I cried and I broke all the plates in my house and broke all the glasses and I was just like I just can't take this anymore it's got to be something better at that time a bright light came on for me and it was Sharon you know what I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired there has to be something better there has to be and so I decided then that I was going to try God. I was going to try it. You know, I didn't know if it was going to last, but I was going to try it. And so I began to go to church. I never opened the Bible. I never read it. I just sat there with my Bible in my lap listening to the preachers, right? They can tell you anything. I'm not looking at the scripture to see if that's what he's saying. Once I decided that it was enough, enough was enough. I decided I wanted to try to follow the So that church I went to on that New Year's Eve, I started going there. Hallelujah. And I started listening. And, you know, God said his word would not return unto him void, but it will prosper him where he sent it. And I would hear it because I wanted to hear it because I wanted that. I got baptized with baby in my belly. And that son's name is David, which represented King David in the Psalms. And so 
I just, I don't know, Brother Carson. I just said, you know what? I'm not looking back. I'm not looking back. And I had, I mean, to say that I haven't fell short would be a lie because I have. I'm not perfect. I'm really not. But my heart is right. See, one thing about God, he looks at your heart. We can say everything that he wants to hear, but that's not what we're doing, right? right? So he looks at the condition of our heart. And I prayed and I said, Lord, create me a clean heart. I want not just a clean heart, I want a new heart. Because sometimes, you know, when you put clothes in the washing machine, they don't always get clean. Sometimes there's a stain that's hard to get out. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Sometimes there's a, come on. Sometimes there's a stain that you got to use some stain remover, right, yep. to get it out. And so I said, Lord, create in me a new heart. Give me a new heart, one that's pliable, one that you can do. September 1999 until today, I stand before you as a product of that. Amen. And that God, God has. He's still washing me. He's still cleaning me. He's still preparing me Amen. for whatever it is He has for me. But Amen. the work, I refuse to go back. I won't go back. I, I came too far, right? Amen. I came too far to go back. But He's been too good to me. Can I He's ask you? Has he go gone? Ahead. Go on, finish. You testify. No, you too good. Go to... ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I, go I just wanted to know, you know, you was telling me about how you was asking for this change of heart and everything. Did you ask him for some anger management? Because it seemed I like... did. Because you see, and like... And guess when you I see, got like, it. You had some... Okay, tell me, when did you get it, Sharon? He's still working on it. He's still working You know what? You you hit it on the head. We He's going to be working on me till I die. And then when I died, I, I pray it's complete, you yes. know? And that's what yes. I strive for each and every day. And it's not all the time that you hear, you know, a pastor just coming out, you know, admitting that God reached down yes. and lifted you up. You know, sometimes there's this verse about the first, last, last, first, and all that. See, you Come were on. last, you know, but he done moved you on up now. Because just like you said, pastors, Bishops, call yourself what you want. Anything can come out your mouth. But God's going to read your heart. Come on. So God. when he turned around and he got this anger management, shooting guns, hitting cars, running off, that was a, that was a little work, you know. Yes. That's, that's, you can't just put that together with no Gorilla Glue. Amen. You have to do no. a whole new thing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you right. Oh, you are so right. So what, what, but what happened? Yeah, go as I began to grow in him, and he began to show me what he had called for me to do, that I had a calling on my life, even before the foundations of the world, when I was still in my mother's womb, he called me and ordained me. Even when he showed me that, I'm like, man, I know more than the teacher. A teacher can't teach me nothing. I didn't have yeah. a teachable spirit. I was very prideful. I was very, um, very conceited. I knew it all. I had it all. And so I'm like, God, you, God can't use me. You can't use me. But I'll tell anybody, it doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. If God has a call on your life, he will prepare you for the work that he has amen say that pastor sharon he will prepare you and he doesn't call you and then prepare you he prepares you and then he calls you so i said lord i said are you for real i i i can't i can't do that and he said no you can't but i can hallelujah come on you got to get rid of you and let me control did you and, get and rid of you? The, come on, that's the struggle, my brother. That's the struggle right now. You're still killing you. Huh? I'm still killing.
doing it. Me too, um, Sharon. He put the Holy Spirit in you to give you the power to do what you need to do to be the best that you need to be. And if God tells you to do something, I like the way you frame that. We have a hesitation to go. God tells us to go. We get fearful. We need this. We gain Nothing could be right. But when God sends you whatever you need, when you go the way God sends you, it's going to be there when you get there. Come on. Come on. Go to church on Sunday and go to happy hour at 6 o'clock. Come on, somebody. Oh. I get up, go to happy hour and get drunk on Friday, Saturday night and be sitting up in church on Sunday morning. I go to church at 11 and because they was having a basketball game at 12, I had to leave early to get to the basketball game. A lot of the world does that, you know. That's the churches rearrange. They rearrange the schedule to yes. fit them instead of doing what God That's is supposed point, to. That's my point, brother. When you made this change and the title pastor and on the battlefield, you know what it takes talking about pastor and following the Lord. So you know there's there's some stuff that's gonna come with it. So what makes you feel that you wanted to dedicate your life? Now, are you still with child when you're baptized? Are you you're still with child while you're coming at 11, but not really? Because it's, it's a process. You know, they say you're a babe. You know, that don't mean you just hop up and start running and walking and knowing everything. Was your second child born when you started kind of getting it together? Or, or were there some more jails, hit and runs? Alcohol, was there still, how long was this growing process before you feel you really caught on? My second child was born when I started trying to get it together. Did I make mistakes along the way? I yep. absolutely, I absolutely did. But I didn't make the ones that I made with the first child. Amen. Okay. But I did make mistakes um, when my boys, got older, I had to apologize to them. I had to take responsibility for the mistakes that I made. I didn't make excuses. A lot of excuses, a lot of parents make excuses like parenting doesn't come with a handbook. It doesn't come with instructions. No, it doesn't, but you know right from wrong. Yes, I did still make mistakes, but even now, I still make mistakes. Amen. My temper still raises sometimes. You know, I'll be, I be thinking the other day, I was just like, you know what, well, Lord, thank you for transforming me, for taking that ugliness away from me, um, the anger away from me. And guess what happened? You the devil it. showed up on Wednesday night, and that same anger came back out. Isn't that funny how that can happen? That's what I was saying. Something I hadn't visited in about 20 years creeped up on me. Now, I didn't, I didn't hit the wall, you know, or nothing like that. But yeah. what you're saying is for real. It came up on you. And just before you even knew it, I was doing a sermon on anger. And just what you're talking about hit me. I mean, it hit me. It was like a, 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 a spirit came over me. Are you... <laughs> that was me. After it was over, I had to repent, of course. I had to repent. And then God told me, he said, you know, I allowed that. Because I need you to stay on your knees about that thing. I need you Amen. to know that that's a part of you. And there are things about me, there's things about you that God's not going to take away. That we're going to have to learn how to take control of that by way of the Holy Spirit. And he said, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But I was convicted. And you I repented. And you repented. And I repented. And I didn't let the devil drag it out. Amen. And I didn't drag it out myself. Okay. And then I was, I mean, even to the people that I did it to, it happened at church. And I mean, it was just like, what? I, I'm a runner. It was I'm ugly. a runner. It's a ugly. Yes. I didn't want to go back. I didn't want to have to face them. 
because I was just the one that said, God has changed me. And then all of a sudden, that ugly me came back out again. But you know what he said? Sometimes we got to walk alone. That goes back to what you were saying, Brother Parson. You know, sometimes when you decide to take a stand for Christ, you're by yourself. You might, you can't bring everybody with you. We'd be trying to, I want you and come with me and I want you. He said, sometimes you got to walk by yourself. And it's lonely sometimes. It's lonely that people are not where you are. Amen. But you have to trust God. How did you catch up to mad, acting this way in church, running out and all this kind of stuff? How did you fast forward a little bit, get to pastor share? Well, my pastor saw the gift in me. And I, I, Brother Parsons, I, I want you to know this, that I am who I am because of Jesus. Amen. It's nothing that I've done. But I am, I walk in all five of the gifts that are spoken in Ephesians 4 and 11. I can operate as a prophet. I can operate as an evangelist. I can operate as a pastor and teacher. I'm going to tell you what I said, brother. Because I'm very transparent. I said, you know what, Lord, when I get ready to, to get on this interview, I said, Sharon, remember, it's not about you. It's not what you think is right. It's not to be done the way you think it's supposed to be done. It's about God. And this is the vision that he has given Brother Parson. I say that to myself. Because pride can stand up so quickly, mm -hmm. so quickly before you know it. And, 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 you know, the enemy can come in as meek as a lamb yes. or he can come in like a roaring lion. And before you know it, he's got you. So I pray for the spirit of discernment that God will allow me to see when he's raising his ugly head so I can cut it off before he can even get started. Amen. Amen. So you that's where you're at now. You you operate in the fivefold. Is that yeah. you know you know what that means? And a yeah. lot of times people get confused with that, but I like the way you frame that also. Sometimes like a pastor can wear many hats. You know, an apostle like Paul, you know, he he did there he did found. he was an evangelist more yeah. so even. Yes, you know, he but was. he could be an apostle. He could profit. Yes, right. He could be a that's pastor. Right. He could do yes, them all. He could wear many hats because he was yes. filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you're you filled go. with it, there you, go. you can hit all corners. I don't limit God in my life. I don't put God in a box because I know he's bigger. He's bigger than a rent paying God. He's bigger than a car payment paying God. He's bigger than I want a new house God. He's bigger than that. Right. Amen. And so I like to put let him be free, just like he says, the, the who those who the son has set free are free. Indeed, let him be free to do whatever he wants to do in me. I have been pastoring. I accepted my call into the ministry in 2000. Ooh. He began he began the preparation in 2000. 2004, I received my license. Amen. 2006, I was ordained. Well, and my sister, right. I'm sure that there's things that we're going to get into down the road because I feel more like you told a story, but at the same time, you threw a whole lot of seed out there. You know, you. you know what I mean? And I mean, you threw a lot of seed, and I pray that it hits someone's heart. Now, before we get ready to wrap this up for this, how, how would you say to someone that may be drunk, may have a hit and run, may have a child, may have a child in them, may be still confused, what would you say, Pastor Sharon K. Nance, what would you say to a, a person who's, whose life is right there? 
I would say if he did it for me, if he could make a filthy, dirty rag like me, a spokesperson for him, he'll do it for you. There's nothing in your life that you've done or even going to do that to keep God from loving you. God loves all of us and he desires none of us to perish. Yeah. He's waiting with his arms open wide to receive you just as you are. I know for many years I thought, oh, I'm not ready. I got to get ready. I got to quit smoking. I got to quit drinking. Mm -hmm. And God said, to me, you can never get ready. <laughs> you can't get ready in your own strength. No, you can't. Come as you are and let me clean you up. And that's what I would tell them. And my, I, that's why I share my testimony. That's why I'm so transparent. Because people think that church folk are so holy. That, <laughs> oh, I can't pray like them. Or, oh, I can't talk like them. Or, oh, I can't this like them. Because they fail to tell people where they came from. I haven't always been saved. Amen. Amen. But if he could save a dirty, wretched man like me, he can save you too. And he will. You know, I want to I wanna piggyback on what you said because he will. I know yes. he will. Yes. I, I'm a witness that he will too. Yes. And there's Woo! a lot of things that go on in our lives that are shameful. But when you confess it and you repent behind it and you give it to the Lord, he takes that shame and, and before you know it, something beautiful yeah. comes out of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He'll take that dirty yeah. part of your soul and just cleanse it. Yes. White yes. as snow, is that what they say? Yes. White as snow. That's the word. That's the word. <laughs> my, That's si the word. <laughs> my sister, I am really glad that you answered my call. I am really glad that you shared your testimony. I've really been moved. Like I said, normally I do hear stories, but I, I feel I had a little church today. Me you know, too. I, I told my, wait a minute, I called my sister yesterday. Uh -huh. I said, and I was telling her about you. I said, we had church on the phone. Uh -huh. We had church. And that's what happened. When two or three are Come gathered on. in his name, he is one in the midst. You can't help but have church. Can't help it. And we're going to continue Amen. to have some church, okay? Amen. Well, thank Amen. you again. I'm so glad thank you stopped you. by. Amen. God bless you. And anything, brother, I, I'm there. I'm here. God, I don't know what God is doing, but I know in Isaiah 43, he said, Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Won't you embrace it? And God is doing something new. And the, uh, unfortunately, the body of Christ is not ready to accept it. But those that know his voice are accepting it. So I appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank and you. I pray that no weapon formed against you Thank shall you. prosper. In the name of Jesus. That Thank every you. resource that you need to complete the work that God has called you to do will be supplied. Thank that you. nothing, you will lack Hallelujah. in nothing, my brother. In I, the name ooh, of Jesus. See what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You stay focused. You have tunnel vision. The enemy is going to send those to try to get you to turn to the left or turn to the right. But I, it behooves you to keep your eye on the prize. Amen. 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 I'm going to keep my eye on you. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get back with you. Thank you so All much. All right. God bless you. I just really was touched by what you were saying. And I'm really glad that you are transparent. I'm glad that you're a believer that can stand up for Christ and say, this is where he's brought me from. You know what I'm saying? I respect that. And my sister, in the name of Jesus, you have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your evening. And I will be getting in touch. And you better. Well. Another episode of Where Were You? And we would like to thank our guests for this evening. Also want to thank New Me. New Me helped sponsor Where Were You? So go on and check it out. New Me forward slash 
our way. Also, go on and hit that like. Go on and hit subscribe. Go on and hit that share. Go on and leave a comment. And if you find anyone that has a story, let me know. And hey, you bless someone today.